This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're at the press conference here for George Burge versus Chris Eubank Jr. I'm joined by George Burge. Hiya. Alright, George? <laughs> wasn't ready for that introduction. Yeah. Oh, right. um, you usually say, I'm here with George Burge. How you doing, George? You didn't do it today. I was just about to. But then you paused and made me feel uncomfortable. It was an artistic pause. Uh, well, make sure it was just a pause and you didn't, like, I don't know, have a nervous twitch or something, you know? I could refer to you as your proper title. Go on, let's it. WBA Super Middleweight Champion of the World. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, yeah, all right. Then. Is that what you were trying to remember? It's hard sometimes. Yeah. Which belt you had? Yeah. <laughs> Um, what did you make of uh, quite an eventful press conference? Say eventful, it was uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of sound bites. Yeah, a lot of sound bites. Well, you know, I'm not good at the sound bites, I suppose, so uh, I usually stumble across them, but we'll see what, uh, what, what what's, uh, what's made of it. WSB, will, I'm sure, will be excited about it. Um, I didn't think uh, Junior would be as animated and talkative as he was today, to be honest. He's the sort of character, in my previous experience, who keeps his cards close to his chest, doesn't really say too much, just looks a bit moody and then says, I'm coming for your belts or, you know, something like that. Um, but today he seemed full of beans. Plain to say, I know he got off a flight from Dubai this morning, so maybe a bit, bit tired or a bit jet lagged or had a few glasses of champagne or something, like that, so he's a bit, a bit riled. But, um, yeah, he was, uh, he was excited, yes, which is, uh, which is good. Because, um, it's not what I expected. I thought it was a bit different. He's, he's changing already, I believe. He's changing already. Uh, I mean, one thing I've said to him myself in the past, the whole trainer situation with him is a little bit unorthodox, shall we say, because Ronnie Davis is sitting up there uh, as the trainer to the fire, as Shane McGuigan is there with you. But the comments from Newbank, it's not the first time, you know, this, you know, look, I follow my own instructions and I take my own advice and. I kind of think, why is Ronnie there? That's why is Ronnie there? Uh, and he says I can't teach. Before, he says, yeah. what can I teach him? He knows everything. So what? So what does he do? Does he get paid? Like, does, does he? Do they buy, Do they rent the gym off him? You know, Ronnie's a lovely geezer, absolutely lovely geezer, but um, he obviously doesn't do any training with him. And I think that's evident to any anyone who knows boxing. You look at Ruben Junior. Um, he gets himself in great shape and lets his hands go, but. Boxing, boxing. You need a little bit more than that at the highest level. Do you know what I mean? You need a little bit more than that. He's like, uh, oh, I don't know. You know, uh, he tried to he tried to dig me out because uh, I gave praise to Shane McGuigan. He said, How can you say that? You're supposed to be a world champion. He said, Well, no. You know, I I understand that pretty much every athlete in the world, you know. Uh, is at his best with a very good supporting team, you know. We spoke about earlier, I mean, uh, Lewis Hamilton don't pull up in the pits and then jump out and change his own tyres, does he? He's got a good team helping him out, you know. He doesn't get in there and switch his mic off and say, like, I'm driving around. Yeah, he's, a, he's got a team, you know. Every fighter out there should have a team. I've been there probably worse off than him because I've been there with a trainer who's given me the wrong advice, you know. At least he don't get any advice. Maybe, I don't know. Um, Maybe he does maybe maybe the dad pipes in with something useful or not so useful. But um, I believe it. I believe it because um, I said, will he conform? Will he change? Will, will, what, what will be? He's tried to conform and change. I mean, um, he's worked with other trainers before, hasn't he? Uh, I saw Adam Booth was in for a bit. Could Adam Booth teach him nothing? I oh, Adam, he brought you in, but you know better than Ronnie Davis. Get out. We're gonna go. We're gonna go a separate ways. Or or. Or are they just, you know, are they just their their setup is just unworkable. He's gonna need he's gonna need a lot of help for this fight. I believe he's gonna need a lot of help. You know, I, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Where, where the guy in my corner, I've zoned out from. I don't, I don't want to hear a word he's got to say. You know, and uh, he's tough on your own. Very tough on your own. But he's managed to get himself to into a position where. His profile way outweighs his, uh, you know, his boxing credentials, you know, the fights he's been in. Uh, so now he's going to have to step up because this is, this is the step up. We'll see if he's capable. You said in the press conference that you would rate Chudinov, um, Federal Chudinov, higher than Eubank. Where does Eubank fit into the complete list of opponents that? You face. I don't know, I have to go through a while. No, you know, so, um, say, you know, you know Paddy Jack would beat him. Yeah. Paddy Jack would beat him. Uh, 
uh, Frotford beat him. Uh, Chudnov give him a nightmare. He you know, fought the brother. Dimitri. He fought the brother. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chudnov was a, was a tough character. You know, I had to break his heart and then chill him. Um, I found, you know, I, I believe I'm a much better inside fighter than um, Eubank Jr. He throws a lot more punches than me, but and um, and therefore would always have success if you stand still with him. But the fact that seeing the shot and finding the shot, better than him. he's good at it. He's good at it, but I believe he's better than him. Would he? Would he? Would he be able to land uppercuts on Tuna at the start? Probably. Would they have been enough? Would Tuna have been able to walk through? Would he have been too big and too physical and too strong? I don't know. I don't know. But um, I don't believe he would be able to have done as good a job against Tuna as I did. You know, so uh, that's a fight that maybe, maybe not. Uh, he was deceptively stronger and better than than he was on tape much like myself so uh you know uh as i say if it was if it was a competition you know on uh bbc who can hit the bag as fast as you can in superstars or something then i wouldn't even bother showing up because i know he's gonna beat me i know he's gonna throw the, i know he can hit the bag more times than i can because i have never ever trained that way in my life and that is the only train he does ronnie davis doesn't teach him how to box who does he do pads with what pads does he do does, does, he, does, he, does, he, does, he, does he does he rattle off 15 uppercuts from the bag and then dad steps in and goes, just pivot, pivot that way. Because I've seen them do that before in the gym when I've been in the gym with them sparring. Um, I thought they would have progressed since then. But I think Junior has found a niche that works for him. He's got to this level with it by just being gritty and strong and fast and, and fit and well matched and um, and that's that, that's that's suited but uh, now he's sort of he's in it he's in it isn't he he's in it he's, in it. he's fighting for an e-ball title uh, against himself who I believe is the best in the division at least I'm a, a, what people would at least call me a world level le legit world champion so. you said in the press conference or you questioned whether Junior had, I think the term he used was outgrown his father. Um, you know, what kind of impact do you think that Senior has had on his, his boy's career? So far, he's had, a great, wise, he's had a great, a great impact on his son. Uh, whether it was intentional or not, uh, the father has a um, an addiction to, you know, the limelight. Uh, he's a uh, he's craved it. For, forever and uh, and now he's probably at that position where the sun's starting to do well where people or half people are buying into the stuff he says but um, this is a real fight now for, for Junior will he need help more than the spiel that his dad comes out with his dad, his dad, and his dad knows it like will his dad change because his dad knows I, I'm going to be here he's as good as said it to me you know, the first thing he said when I bumped into Monaco is Oh, you better not beat my son. That was not what I was expecting from senior to hear from the dad. First thing, just before we go to the gala and pick who we're going to fight. Um, you know, and I'd seen him the week before at, uh, the Abraham fight, you know. So, you know, he's a, good, he's, a good, he's a good egg, the dad. You know, he talks a lot of stuff, but I think he's got a good soul. Um, he'll, he cares about his son. He's protective of his son. But also, he's... He's fighting the uh, the addiction of wanting to be loved, you know, wanting to be liked. Right now, they're both liked, which is good for them. But that's a scary thing because um, you know you heard that you've heard the son in an interview say that uh, you know I don't care if people love me or hate me as long as they're buying tickets. And he's just trying to explain it, you know, so when he gets a lot of hate, a lot of people giving him stick. He's, he, he started off with that, but lately he's probably getting a little bit more praise than people fighting his corner, they're not. As soon as that stops, which will be directly after this fight, um, that's going to be that's gonna be a very difficult um, thing to mend for both of them. It's going to be a hard thing to come over. And as the fight looms closer, they're both going to know that and understand it. It's going to become even more of a pressure. Will he said something different in the dad that the dad is not confident in him for this fight? Or will the dad have to be well rehearsed every time he's around him? 
because I don't think they put up the prestige the whole time. I don't think the, the storyline that, that, that they put out to the to the to the public is what it says it is the whole time. I know he's uh, extremely well rehearsed, um, thinks about what's going to come his way, but like most of us you know we're preoccupied with other things as well it's hard to think that quickly on the spot he's going to have to really work hard the sun at preparing for this fight in that it's not just about how fit he can get he's fit he's probably fit already he's probably as fit now as he will be fighting he's on weight he's not he's not big enough he's a middleweight so he's on weight um but getting fit ain't enough you know he can get fit for 15 rounds we're only fighting 12 you know you need to uh, need to work on some how you're going to beat me uh, I think that's what's going to elude him throughout camp and obviously on the night did you see the, um, the press conference with um, when James Miguel went uh, had a press conference with Frank Warren recently did you see that press conference no, I saw I saw a bit of the interviews with with uh, De Gale, I mm. think. Yeah. Well, when someone from the audience had asked Frank about this tournament that you're in, I mean, his response is, "Why are we talking about that when the best one isn't even in the tournament?" Um, what do you think about that? Oh, that he's going to say that he's just he's got he's got uh, he's got James Gale fighting on his uh, on his channel. Uh, no, James Gale's not the best division. I believe I am. Um, James Gale is coming off a draw against Badu Jack. Uh, has had uh, a layoff, then surgery, and then in an interview that day he said, "I just want a nice, easy one. I just want one to come back and you know test my shoulder out. You're world champion, mate. You can't come back and do a six rounder." Well, obviously, he's come back. We've got a world title fight with a. I don't, I've never really heard of the opponent, so he's, he, he's not fighting fit so to speak in that he's not prepared to compete at the highest level right now so I don't see how that could justify him being the best in the division uh, I believe I'm the best in the division um, but, but that's, that's, that's opinions isn't it? you're going back to the Manchester Arena this is the first time since uh, your first fight with Carl Fox obviously you're okay with that yeah yeah fine yeah I, I found it out today I, I, I did wonder I've been there a few times um, I like Manchester Arena you know obviously didn't win last time I was there but everything but uh, but it doesn't matter you know it really doesn't matter uh, they've got nice changing rooms nice big changing rooms at Manchester Arena it's good for everyone to get there tickets sold out nice hotel I do my whole camp in the uh, in London I'm just going to go up uh, five weeks so could be anywhere in the UK really it, it don't really bother me too much uh, it's nice that uh, it's like sort of an away weekend for, for, for loads of friends and family to get up there and enjoy themselves that was the first time I actually watched from Box Live on the undercard of Faye Ruiz. I was going to say, uh, what, against Frots? You call you, you're a proper armchair yeah. fan, Jesus. Like. Who did you fight on the, against, uh, on the undercard of Faye Ruiz? Ruiz, I fought um, Charles Adamu, who at the time was like, you know, it was a Commonwealth title fight, first first title fight for me. He'd gone the distance with Cole Frotch. Um, he was the champion, real awkward. Um, Garnetan, I think he was or something. Uh, he was good, good fight for me. He dropped him a couple of times. 209, was it all right? 208 or 209? The year uh, would have been 08, it would have been uh, probably 10. Probably 10 right now. Oh no, 9. 9. No, 10. 10, because Hey, hey Valoev was 9, weren't it? 09, and it was a fight off, it was like 11, 11 09, and a fight after that, I think. It's April, was it? It's April. It was April, and then you got Harrison. It was in November April. That yeah, it was yeah. April. Yeah. yeah, that was 2010. Okay. Um, All right, then that was it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a comment. Yeah. That expanded into two minutes of chat. Um, oh, listen. Have you got anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no. Do you think Smith beats Bramer? Yeah, but. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I don't really know. I, th I thought Bramer was didn't have much left in the tank. I've got to be honest. I haven't seen the Brandt fight yet. Um, Smith will either chin him early, or it could go a few rounds because he's a south boy, he's a bit fiddly. And it might be in Berlin. It might, you know, it might be it might be a struggle for him. Uh, but I've got a feeling the way this tournament's going, uh, 
Smith will chill in three rounds pretty emphatically and then he'll be the sort of go-to favourite for, for winning the tournament even though I'm like Chin Eubank in four rounds as well which will be like me say that again say that last comment again I believe that uh, Callum Smith will knock out uh, Braymar yeah. within like maybe three rounds pretty yeah. well and uh, I believe you'll go favourite, even though I will most likely do the same against uh, Junior uh, in this fight. Because um, is that your prediction that you? I think I, I think I, I think I'll catch him early. He's going to go in four rounds. Well, I'm going to catch him early, so I'll just give it four rounds. I don't think it'll be like the first round or anything. It might be, but I think I'm going to catch him early. He's going to go. Um, there's a big, there's, gonna be a, there's a huge size disparity between the pair of us. And considering he can't, he can't box his way into position, um, and he and, and he don't keep his hands covering his chin when he punches. Uh, I think I'm going to catch him early. But that's the prediction just between me and you. Yeah, so yeah obviously. I, tell you I won't put that. George Groves, thank you very much for watching IFL TV and. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll catch up with you ahead of Feb 17th. It's a while away, so. Yeah, well, Christmas, get it out of the way and stuff like that. Uh, got any plans for Christmas? Uh, I'm going to go away. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where are you going? I don't know where yet. Yeah. I'm going to go away somewhere, yeah. Oh, proper screws, isn't it? Just like, can't buy you on a present or something. I'm going away for Christmas. <laughs> what about, <laughs> what about Hanukkah? Do you know anything? Jewish holiday or anything? That is before Christmas, isn't it? Am I Jewish? I don't know, you might be. No. I don't know, are you, are you Christian? No. Me neither, but no. you've got to do Christmas, isn't you, I suppose? Any no. excuse. New Year. I'm not Anything. really doing a lot. Just in case I don't see you again, you know. I'm not really doing enough in plans for going to the gym, doing training, that sort of thing. Keep in shape. You can get light this time quite early because Christmas is coming, do you know what I mean? It's cold out. Fucking hell. Fat hangs you when it's cold. Like normal people like me, anyway, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. I, uh, we stay in London, do our camp in London, should be fun. Um, let us know if you're around, we're uh, getting into it, we do some stuff. 100%. Let yeah. us yeah, know if you're going on holiday, where you're going for Christmas, might come along too, might be fun. Yeah. More than welcome. Well, yeah. you invited me to your wedding years ago, so yeah. I only one, didn't I? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, you came to our wedding. Long time ago now, isn't it? Hello. Bring back the old memories. Yeah, we were mates back then. Well, <laughs> We've always been mates. We've always been mates. Yeah, no, I, uh, it wasn't in the early times of life in London either, was it? I got married in 2011. We started in 2010. It's been around a while. I knew he was going to make it, so I got in early with the, with the invite to the wedding. So I thought this, these guys are going to crack it and I'm going to keep them on the side. You know? And likewise, I always knew you'd win a world title. Yeah? yeah. Did you get me a present? Did you like? yeah. The money you made off Fox Grove Stew, absolutely not. I, that hadn't even happened by then. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, Cassius. Shows up to wedding, not even a card. If I ever get married again, All right. renew the vows because uh, you know, you're not invited. Didn't even get a card. George, thank you very much for coming to our TV. Thank you. Catch you soon.